get into that. But also this one that came down during our show, Pete Thamel. Gonzaga AD met with Big 12 Commissioner Brett Yormark in person in Texas last week. He, of course, Brett Yormark was in Waco early last week about Gonzaga potentially joining the Big Ten. This is part of the broader discussions that have in, unfolded in recent weeks between the Big 12 and Gonzaga. And I, I have to think that the Pac-12 has also probably had some discussions and may have been reported, if, if I missed that, uh, with the, the Pac-12 and Gonzaga uh, too. Remember yeah, now... there's been a lot of mentions of that. Yeah. yeah. So uh, remember now, the money that we've discussed about the TV deal and what it could end up being, counting everything, part of those units, not a big part of it, but a little bit of a chunk of all that could be what you also develop from the NCAA tournament with what you get, but also what you earn along the way with Gonzaga, if in that fact they're a part of it, eventually with Houston, Cincinnati, UCF, and also Brigham Young. Yeah, and obviously this would be for basketball only. Gonzaga doesn't have football. They're not going to start a football program just because they're doing this. But I think just fundamentally Gonzaga needs to do something because they are far and away the best team in the conference that they're in. And when they have one-off games against a Kansas, a Duke, a Michigan State, a Baylor, or whoever during the regular season, then, yeah, they can win those games. And they, they quite often do. Uh, and that sets them up for a nice role. The problem is, is that if you're in the Big Ten, the Big 12, the SEC, especially in the Big 12 because it is, it is the deepest basketball conference, the ACC is also really deep. If you're in those leagues, then once the season starts, you are playing – tournament caliber teams more often than you're not as where Gonzaga and this is not their fault but they go into games where they're not playing tournament caliber teams and then you get to the first couple rounds and because you're super talented you've got NBA talent on your team at Gonzaga you're going to win two or three games in the tournament but lately and it's not I mean they get to the final four or they get to the the championship game and they play against a team that has been in tournament mode from you know December 30th on, and it has affected them. So if they can get the same talent that they're getting and probably even improve if they're going to be in a Power 5 conference basketball-wise, uh, they can finally, finally, finally get one of those trophies on the mantle they've been trying so hard for uh, over the last 20-plus years. Uh, yeah, I mean, that that makes sense, but um, I'm viewing it a little bit differently. I mean, I, I agree with you in that Gonzaga could afford to play in a better conference and have better competition and therefore be better prepared, but is that going to be traveling cross-country to Morgantown yeah. once a year? I mean, there's a lot of things that need to be figured out with this before we go too crazy over it. I do think, just on the surface, that it's like this is like fantasy booking. It's like it sounds great, it looks great, but like if you really had to execute it, would it be that great? I don't know. Um, that's what needs to be, uh, you know, ultimately sorted out if there is some further traction to this. But we need to keep in mind for one, like I think it's a cool and interesting story. I do. I think it's very interesting that Brett Yormark has reached out to Gonzaga or vice versa or however that's occurred. I think that's part of him being. And, or, or whoever came up with the idea originally, uh, being you know out front and being smart and proactive and trying to do every single thing they can to make this conference new and fresh and interesting and valuable. And I would imagine that Gonzaga basketball would add some value of some sort. Uh, and you know, there's obviously the questions of would it be just only basketball? Unlikely. Uh, you would think it would. You know, I wouldn't go for that if I was Gonzaga. Just basketball only. I'm, I'm seizing my opportunity with multiple conferences apparently talking to me because the PAC's been talking to them for a while now, according to various reports. Um, you would think that an all sports deal would be the route that they would go. That can all be decided and cleaned up later. But um, yeah, on the surface, it's a cool idea. It seems like it would be awesome to see Gonzaga versus all of the Big 12's lineup of of great basketball schools. Um, but in terms of you know, the travel and the other sports and how all of that would work. You know, there's a lot of questions to be answered there. And, you know, again, they've got other suitors uh, like the Pac-12. So that would seemingly be a bit more close to home and maybe make a bit more sense. But who knows what your mark and the Big 12 are offering, uh, including, you know, a, the most talented or top to bottom, I think, ba basketball conference in America. So very cool on the surface. A lot that needs to be sorted through because by no means is this a report that this is inevitable or that it's happening soon. It's just confirmation that uh, or, or, you know, letting people know like, hey, the Pac-12 is not the only one that's been talking to Gonzaga about 
coming on board. So very interesting. And yeah, it's Pete not Thamel just about report, football. By the way, if Pete Thamel reports it, you know that it's it's legitimate. And uh, as as are the, the reports well, about other conferences as well. well. One more quick note. Hold on, Paul. From Sheehan, if Gonzaga joined the Big 12, again, this is a, just as out there, it's no different than teams joining other conferences in football, they would have the numbers one, two, three, and four ranked teams according to Ken Palm from 2022 and five of the top seven. Yeah, they, they would. And, and uh, But it is. I think I like that, that uh, let's start exploring how, how basketball can affect realignment as well and not just football. I think that that's forward thinking as well because you, you make a lot of money in the basketball tournament. How do you increase the value of the basketball tournament? How do you increase the value of the basketball regular season, which actually increasing the value of the tournament will come if you do increase the value of the regular season? How do you do that? You play more games that matter. And I'm sure somebody's mentioned it somewhere, but yes, one way to curtail some of the logistical issues that you might face with a team from uh, Washington uh, would be to have, I don't know, a team in Arizona or a team, you know, uh, in San Diego or, you know, whatever the possibilities will be. So that will certainly churn the realignment waters uh, that, that never really calmed down to begin with. But, uh, you know, that will be another, you know, piece of chum to throw out there for the realignment folks to, to chew on a bit, including myself. Um, you know, cause there is a lot to like, okay, how would that work? But that's down the line stuff. Like I mentioned, this is just on the surface, a very interesting story. Um, and I like that again, there's a commissioner that's being proactive. That's considering pretty much, you know, any idea, uh, and, you know, if there's something to it, there's some solid substance to it. Uh, and certainly there's a lot of substance to Gonzaga basketball and that brand. Then he's going to at least check it out and see how it could potentially work and how it could benefit the Big 12. And so uh, as, you know, somebody in Big 12 country, I love that. And I, you know, I would just only wonder if, you know, what's the Pac-12s hold up and where, where are they? You know, where are they in terms of potentially adding Gonzaga, knowing that they've talked to them? Where are they potentially in I in San Diego State? You know, where where are they in that? We don't know nearly as much about that. The Big 12's been out there saying, like, yeah, we're... I mean, they've been saying for two years they've been looking, you know, ne never stopped looking, never been quite exact on everything they've looked at, but they've let it be known. They're open for business, and your mark reinforced that. The Pac-12 a little less so. So uh, these two conferences just can't seem to get away from each other. Um, and so now maybe some jostling for, for the Gonzaga basketball uh, program and, and all that comes with that, including the other sports. But, yeah, very interesting. All right, a couple of notes. I just happened to look this up. Again, there's flights and stuff, but Gonzaga – to Provo, which would be the closest you would think, Provo, yeah. uh, is about 11 or so hours of a trip. I don't even want to look at what it would be to Orlando <laughs> and Morgantown. But again, now, what are the note? I'm going to say this because I think it's fair. If we're going to sit there and go, oh, my God, the SEC is stealing Oklahoma and Texas, and they're just raiding, and this is not fair, and no one really said it wasn't fair, but the thought that Texas and Oklahoma are leaving, my God. Big 12 is about to load up with me. It, again, possibility aren't they trying to do that in basketball in that part of that and here's a quote in the premium section uh, this is the out-of-box thinking that we need this is how you make waves keep it coming brett yormark well i do think it'd be cool to have a big 12 basketball tournament at barclays you know because his, his history there and you've got like gonzaga and kansas you know or baylor or whoever is your, you know your headliner and a bunch of great basketball games or whatever you know there's a lot of different routes i mean i'm sure your mark's imagination is is running wild i don't know that i see it as like the sec comparison though <laughs> like um not in dollars and not in tv rights because that's going to be a part of it okay, no matter what yeah. i'm talking about loading up the depth of already a conference that's really good and has a bunch of elite teams and then all of a sudden you're talking about the logos of Texas and Oklahoma in the SEC in football. Yeah, I mean, I kind of see that comparison, but I'd need to see them like go then go grab Arizona or something to really to believe that. I mean, I, I just think they're looking for whatever makes sense to add value, period. I, I, you know, And basketball just seems like a no-brainer because they're not going to surpass the SEC in football anytime soon, or the Big Ten for that matter. Now, you could argue that they're you know as entertaining as some of those others, but... Uh, Value-wise, the, the networks just don't view them that way. So basketball seems like an, a logical place to go and try to carve out more of a niche because you are better than those conferences, or at least you can argue that you're better than those conferences, and you have the national titles recently to prove it. So if they want to try to become the SEC of college basketball, then I'm all for that as long as it brings in dollars and you know keeps uh, keeps everything afloat. And so, yeah, in that way, it's sort of like that. Um, 
except for you know the fact that the Texas OU deal was done by the time that we even learned about it. This is all exploratory. Yeah, um, they're talking. That's all it is, and and nothing more. But maybe it's like the TV deal a week ago where that suddenly didn't look impending. And then, you know, two days later, Brett Yormark's sitting here talking about the brand new deal they're about to sign. So yeah, we'll right. see. And again, I'll, I'll reiterate, like, you, how do you increase the value of something? You increase the value of the regular season. And you're, that's that's through TV and, and adding, making the Big 12 regular season must-see TV, you know, in basketball. Because right now the tournament, it's only going to grow as the, you know, it's what's changed about it? Nothing. It's still... One of the most awesome things in sports, if not the most fun month That's of the year. That's how Gonzaga made a name it's, for it's themselves, good, it's making great. a run. Right? So, all right, so the tournament is always going to be good. But before the tournament, basketball kind of floats along, right? And they, they, they're they they probably always wondering, like, how come everybody likes this at the end, but the middle is fun, too? The start like, let's middle. make sure, yeah. All right, now you just tried to do a filibuster. We're not going to let you do that. Let's get into mm. Kansas.